Hey everyone, Astronaut98 here, talking about Season 3 for All Mankind's Phoenix Spacecraft. And here you are, seeing the beautiful replica I built over the past month, and I hope you all like it. Why, you may be asking? Because I decided to go see the NASA SLS launch live at Cape Canaveral. I will be live streaming the whole thing on August 29th. You better be watching, because I will be there. Now, what you're first seeing here is the Polaris space shuttles I made the replica of. Yes, I know they're not screen accurate, did the best with what I could, and this was the result. It's a very capable little vehicle. Uh, however, you will have to drain the fuel tank so that we can go through re-entry safely. Luckily, I did add a drain port for that, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Now, once that's been docked to the spacecraft, you can have up to eight engineers working at the same time. Now, one of the first few modules we're going to launch is what I like to call the Small Crew Habitation Module. Basically, it's a smaller version of a bigger module, which will be launched later. It is very useful. It holds a lot of crew members, so you can bring as many uh, poets, astronomers, musicians, you name it. Basically, fill it up like Starship Enterprise. Now, you're going to want to dock these small ones to what I like to call the Miniature Propulsion Arrays. I previously built the Polaris spacecraft in this video in your top right of the video. If you want to see me build the Polaris Space Station, just click right there. I'll be waiting. Basically, you dock these four little ones on the corrected thruster version of the Polaris Station. And once you've got all four of those, you then begin launching two of the cargo carrier modules. One with a habitat, one with a drill, and another one with a habitat, another one with a drill. So that way it balances out on both sides of the craft so it doesn't go into a shaky wobble. And if your hands are shaky, make sure they shake their way over to like, subscribe, and bell notification button if you want to hear or see more of my videos. Now, here we are launching the cargo habitation modules. We're launching two habs right now. They'll basically be docked on opposite sides from each other. Make sure you do that. That is very, very important. You don't necessarily have to use the propulsion module from the upper stage to boost this all the way there. You can, but I didn't. I basically just used the monopropellant thrusters on here to rendezvous by hand and made sure to deorbit that piece of junk because I'm not North Korea. Once you've got those two on there, you can then launch the two other cargo carriers carrying drilling modules. The habitation modules are they look okay, they fold up a little weird because this is KSP and we can't exactly do a garage door type deployment. You'll see that later in the video. Do stay tuned. I do like that these modules are basically their own little flying separate ships. They can be kind of unwieldy, so watch out for that. And these ones will be uploaded separately on Kerbal X. That way you can dock whatever you want in those empty slots on the Phoenix spacecraft when I upload the full vehicle. Just as a convenience to the people who follow me on Kerbal X. Alright, now that we've got the two habitation modules and the two rovers perfectly and tightly docked to the station, let's talk about something I thought was funny from this season. The fact that North Korea sent a probe to Mars. I'm like, okay, it's going to be a puny little probe. No, they basically sent a whole Zon spacecraft. Zon is basically a stripped-down version of the Soyuz spacecraft, and they sent two men to the surface of Mars before everyone else, which I think is just a really awesome twist and a great way to end the season. Showing that space can bring out the best in humanity as a whole and better ourselves for the future. Basically, here's the large cargo slash crew modules, and the, you want to dock those four of them so that way you can fit as many Kerbals as you want. I'm like, 
I'm pretty sure this vehicle could fit well over a hundred Kerbals in, in it. And I'm just like blown away by how many Kerbals I can actually fit in here. I could practically colonize any planet in the game with this vehicle if I wanted to. <laughs> Which, I really don't want to colonize every planet in the game. I'd rather do it the uh, fun, slow, methodical with method that I like. Doing it like 8 or 10 at a time, not 50 at a time. Because I'm not that... I'm not exactly that proactive in the game. But, yeah. Now, one fun detail I liked from this show is for the Polaris spacecraft, they're using Space Shuttle era EVA suits, but with a different color. That is very clever of the art direction. However, their art directors really need to start talking to the uh, set designers. Because for this vehicle here, the MSAM Popeye, which just launched, the method by which they enter and exit the vehicle is not shown very well. I mean, my original guess was they, like, climbed out some sort of side hatch on the top. Like, some sort of door pops out, folds down, and basically inside of the door is like a ladder. But no, they go through some sort of, like, floor panel. And I'm like, the only way I could find to fit fuel tanks in an MSAM type vehicle is like that. Just putting them on the bottom. And let's just face it. That fuel is probably not safe for being around humans. So, here we are launching the Central Solar Truss Structure, as I like to call it. Now, I am using a different launch method for this. I'm using what I like to call the Expendable Engine with a bo Boost Upper Stage method, which could basically be used to launch gigantic solar panels or basically massive habitats made out of uh, expend, uh, expended lower stages of rockets, which I think is a really cool and neat idea, but I doubt it'll ever happen. So, you see how it has these uh, long struts running down it? Yeah, those will be important later. The Once it's docked, you'll have a Kerbal go on EVA, basically tear those uh, I-beams apart and build them up to the height at a docking port on the end, and then you can dock massively overpowered uh, solar array attachment structures, which I like to call the uh, solar booster. Now, I'm just going to skip through this part here because it's a long, laborious process, and you guys didn't really seem to like the fact that it took me so long to build the Polar Space Station. Yes, I know. I'm not used to making long-form videos, but to quote my good buddy that I found on YouTube, Isaac Arthur, might want to grab a drink and a snack. So here we are launching the solar boosters on an Atlas Centaur. I had an Atlas Centaur just lying around on my hard drive, so I just was like, this seems to be powerful enough, let's use it. Granted, I also tried launching it on the Thor Delta variants, but that didn't get very far, literally. So once you have them that nearby, use the little clawed rover thing that I make and give you with the Polaris station and have it grab onto those solar boosters and just dock them to that docking port that you literally just attached like maybe 5-10 minutes ago, which I think is really cool. You will want to probably run a strut between the tops of the two towers just to be safe. But here's the propulsion segment of the vehicle. This thing is crazy. I was originally thinking, can I just launch it all in one go? But then I'm like, I'm launching it from For All Mankind's universe. It'll have some sort of like drop tank design, which is what I went with. Which I thought was a rather neat idea. And it also has six docking ports, so you can add those six external fuel tanks that are shown in the show. These are not the same engines I have on the current version, which will be up on Kerbal X very soon. So, keep in mind that the engine flame color is not going to be the same as you see in this video. So, I decided, 
Rather than launching six massive fuel tanks, I realized I have six massive fuel tanks on my fuel transfer vehicle for Xenon Co. fuel station. So I decided they're already in orbit, might as well just have Helios buy them and use them as fuel tanks. Now, mind you, these were already on orbit, so I had to build them and launch them at some point, so they will be in the video where I launch the interstellar lander vehicles. They basically act as a underbelly drop tank, but I decided to keep them on and just bring them up. So, I recently encountered an interesting question by Sacred Cow Shipyards. Check his channel out, it's a really great channel. He pointed out that all futuristic spacecraft seem to either be made to spin in some sort of manner to provide gravity, or have some sort of giant massive wheel. And he's like, wouldn't that affect your thrust? To answer his question, no. It actually improves the stability of the entire vehicle. Because it turns the entire vehicle into a massively stabilized gyroscope. Assuming the vehicle is balanced, which it usually is, it'll just keep itself pointed in the same direction it was pointed at initially. Which means you don't have to worry about your guidance system messing up as much, which is always a good thing. Here we are. We have Polaris Station fully converted into the Phoenix spacecraft. Straight away headed for Mars, or in this case, Duna. Here you see the MSAM Popeye coming down for a landing. Now, one thing I thought was interesting is how do they keep the fuel in the tanks from sloshing about? Then it occurred to me, this is the For All Mankind universe. They probably already figured out that they could use giant Teflon bags to keep the fuel from sloshing. Which is a really great idea, because Teflon has like a freezing point of like 1 Kelvin. I mean, it's still stretchy at like 5 Kelvin, which is ridiculous. But here we go. A beautiful, perfect landing of what I like to call the target accessory craft. Now, we use this as the target craft for landing the habitat and drilling rig which are about to be coming. Now here you see the uh, cargo carrier coming in for a nice gentle landing next to the MSAM. This vehicle you'll go through a good quantity of the fuel in the tanks because well I went through a good quality of fuel in the tanks because I'm not that great of a pilot especially on Duna. There are probably some of you that are better pilots than I am and can get it there with like burning no fuel whatsoever. But, yeah, so once you're close enough to the surface, try and keep her as level as possible and open those doors while you're in the air. So that way, if it does try and tip over, the doors will kind of stop you. I discovered that the hard way. Yeah. One cool thing I might be building later will be Happy Valley Base, or maybe Deep Space Nine, so keep yourself tuned for that. So, you just drop that habitation module out, and lift off, leaving it behind. Alrighty. And now, once we've dropped off that habitation rover, as I like to call it, because it's basically a giant rover, you undo a couple struts, and then deploy the landing gear slash wheels. Now, I do like having uh, habitation modules clipped into each other because it's a habitation module. You can always build a wall inside of a room. Fuel tanks, you can't exactly do that. Now here's the drilling module. You undo a strut, drop it down, start deploying the wheels, and then you lift off very, very carefully to make sure you don't damage the heat exchangers or the drills or anything that's fragile on this. I mean. This mining rig setup is like the most fragile thing I think I've ever launched a Duna. Second only to a Kerbal. But at least Mars has some gravity, so the Kerbals won't lose all of their bone density. 
They'll just have very bad osteoporosis when they come back home to Kerbin. Now, you can move this drilling rig around, and once you get it to where you want it, you stop and retract the wheels. It creates a massive braking surface to keep you from moving. And then you start deploying the solar panels and heat exchangers and the drills. And then invariably you'll be concerned that it might be overheating. Don't worry about it. It's a minor glitch that I encountered. It happens every now and again. But like our Soviet friends who like Pepsi, thank you Matt Pep for explaining that just before I watched that episode in For All Mankind. If you haven't watched Matt Pat's food theory on how Pepsi almost got its own navy, check it out. But here we are. We have a fully set up Martian base ready for producing fuel, mining, and exploration. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Or release a new video every other week for your viewing pleasure. I am the astronaut. Let's fly. <laughs>